So last month, I uploaded a video of how I passed my AWS Cloud Practitioner Foundational exam with just seven days of preparation, which you guys loved. So to continue this series, today I'm going to share how I passed my AWS Solution Architecture Associate exam, breaking the exam down, the resources I used, starting with the pre-exam preparation. Now the AWS Solution Architect Associate exam is one of three associate level exams. And by many experts in the industry, it's recommended to go through your foundational first and then to the Solution Architect Associate exam. As a Solution Architecture exam will give you a good understanding of the breadth of AWS services, architectures, and best practices. From here onwards, the developer is recommended and then into the SysOps and then to your pro level certifications. So last month, I passed my AWS foundational exam and AWS gave me a cheeky 50% off voucher for my future AWS examinations. So for my Solution Architect Associate exam, this cost me $75 instead of the usual $150. So this gives you another reason to start off with the foundational exam. But I do know that many companies do cover your exam costs. But nevertheless, it's still worth starting with the foundational exam to give yourself a good understanding of AWS and cloud in general, and you get the 50% voucher for future exams. I previously had a technical architect role, therefore I had a good understanding of core system design architecture principles and patterns like high availability, disaster recovery, scaling, load balance, balancing security best practices and more, which meant that having a solid foundational knowledge of architecture in general definitely helped make the exam a lot easier. We still need to understand and learn how AWS does things and their design patterns, and of course, all of the different services that they use. Now let's break the exam down. For the Solution Architect Associate exam, AWS recommends a minimum of 12 months of hands-on experience with AWS technology, including using compute, networking, storage, and database AWS services as well. And I think one year is quite a lot of time, which I don't think is really required. I feel like if you have no cloud or tech experience, you should be able to pass the exam within four to six weeks. If you have recently passed your AWS foundational exam, then you can definitely pass your Solution Architect Associate with just four weeks of preparation. Now, AWS also recommends that you have experience in deploying, managing, and operating workloads on AWS, as well as implementing security controls and compliance of requirements. Now, that is quite a lot of knowledge that you need. Now the exam format is 65 multiple choice questions and it's a 90 minute exam. You can take your exam in English, Japanese, Korean, and even Chinese. I took mine in Korean and to pass the Solution Architect exam, you need a score of 700 out of 1000 to pass. So a 70% pass rate. I got a score of 734, which is about 74%. I'm pretty happy with it. You know, I did just about scrape it. Now prepping for this exam will give you a solid understanding of AWS architecture principles the well-architected framework from AWS, as well as more in-depth knowledge of key and core AWS services such as EC2, IAM, S3, SQS, RDS, VPC, and Root 53. Now, the AWS Solution Architect Associate Exam essentially validates your technical experience in designing and deploying scalable, highly available, and fault-tolerant systems on AWS. Now, let's talk about my AWS prep strategy. Now, as I already had AWS experience before, I decided to purely focus on my knowledge gaps and which AWS services I wasn't familiar with. And I decided to first take a mock exam and then see where the gaps are. Now, the exam itself is split across four core AWS domains. We've got design resilient architectures, design high performing architectures, design secure applications and architectures, and design cost optimized architectures. My gaps were in designing a secure and cost optimized architectures, which is where I focus my exam preparation on. As I do with all exams, I've made myself a notion page with all of the questions that I got wrong. And then throughout every single day, I would go through my knowledge gaps, the questions that I got wrong and do an active recall and try and remember the answers. I think I took about 12 different mock exams from WizLabs and Udemy, more on the resources later on this video. But I believe my notion page had around 130 questions that I got wrong across 12 mocks, which is pretty good. Now, I highly, highly recommend that you definitely take the same approach as me when you're taking these mocks make yourself a notes page and write the questions that you got wrong down and with the answers and then force yourself to actively recall the answers. Remember, any exam that you take is all about memorizing the answers. Now, at the same time, I highly recommend that you should also do some analysis on the questions and topics that you're getting wrong. As I found, I was getting a lot of the same questions wrong in Route 53 with the different routing types and getting these mixed up. Now, let's talk about the resource. And I think by far the best resource is Adrian Cam 
Cantor's AWS SSA course. Pretty much everyone that I work with uses either Adrian's or Stefan Marek's Udemy courses. I think Adrian explains the concepts in more depth and makes them a lot easier to understand. And you also get quite a lot of hands-on practical labs, which is very useful. And I think having as many practical lessons will help cement the theory. So when you look for a course, find a course that gives you a lot of hands-on labs. So you can get Adrian Cantrell's course for like $79, or you can pay a sum of around $400, I think. And this will get you all of the current AWS courses, Associate, Pro, and Security, along with all future courses that he does as well. So it's like a one-time payment for all AWS courses. I'll put a link in my description so you can check it out because I think it's so worth taking that course. For the mocks, I use the Tutorial Dojo's AWS mocks by John Bonso. These mocks are actually much harder than the exam itself, but also very similar to the exam too. So definitely get yourself these mocks along with the WizLabs ones, which you can get on a yearly membership level. Now, of course, AWS also shares free exam guides, sample questions, and official question sets, along with free digital training, exam readiness webinars, live Twitch training, and exam prep courses squeezed in just three hours, which is worth doing if you don't have any AWS experience or you just can't afford to buy these courses. Tutorial Dojo mocks gives you six mocks, and I strongly suggest that you take these as many times as possible, leading up and as close as possible to the exam itself. So you have a good breadth of questions that you've taken, and that will just set you up nicely for the exam itself. Now, the good thing about this exam is that there wasn't any practical questions that you have to take. So you don't have to go and set things up in the AWS console. Whereas with the SysOp Associate, that, that exam is part hands-on and part questions. Now let's talk about the exam itself. Now in the UK, you can take your exam with two different providers, Pearson or PSI. I use Pearson and I know it's what most people who take the exam use as well. I also took my exam at home rather than going into an exam center. Now there was a little bit of a delay checking into my exam. When I joined into my exam, there was around 30 plus people in the queue, but I did end up starting my exam on time. So I guess there was no delay, but don't worry if you join the exam and there's about 20 people in front of you, don't worry, it goes fairly quickly. Now the examinators are a little bit over the top with making sure that your desk is clear. So make sure there's absolutely nothing on your desk apart from your laptop and a glass of water, but make sure your glass of water is actually see-through and doesn't have any labels on. Also make sure you're not wearing any watches or anything like that. Now during the exam, you can't read the questions out loud. So you have to be silent and read the questions in your head, which I guess is normal for exam conditions. And usually I'm definitely not an exam kind of person, but I felt really confident going into this exam, knowing I've been through 600 different questions and 12 different mocks. And again, actively recalling the ones I got wrong in Notion helped me so much. I think I finished my exam in about 45 minutes. I didn't bother going through the questions again, as I don't want to second guess myself. And throughout these exams, I've realized that the first answer that I normally go with is usually correct. So go with your gut instincts every single time. Now, the majority of questions were very similar to the tutorial dojo and the WizLab mocks that I took, but there were some questions that I weren't too sure of and that I ended up just guessing. When I finished the exam, I didn't get a pass or fail like I did on the AWS Cloud Practitioner Foundational exam. AWS actually reviews your footage of you during the exam before giving you the result. But generally, if you pass your exam, you won't get your results straight away. But if you fail, you will see it on your screen after your exam. I got my result after like four hours of finishing my exam. I know some people have had to wait a couple of days for their result to come through. You'll get your AWS badge within 24 hours so you can slap it onto your LinkedIn so everyone can congratulate you and give your post a like. I also had an all day buzz of passing this exam. Now I want that feeling again for the next exam that I take. Now, are certifications worth it? My opinion on this hasn't changed whatsoever. It's a yes and a no. Certifications verify your understanding, but they don't actually prove that you can set up and configure things in AWS. And generally, not many engineers actually use the console to build things, or they shouldn't really use it to set things up like services. The console is mainly used for verification. Most competent engineers will use infrastructure as code tools to set up services in AWS. Now, I've seen so many people that prepare and pass their AWS certifications with flying colors, but when they need to design, build, and solve problems for a client and be hands-on with AWS, that's when they start to struggle. So really, I'd say being able to use AWS properly is more important than certifications. Then again, they definitely look very good on your CV, especially if you want to become a freelancer or contractor, then you should have as many certifications as possible to help you stand out from the rest. My advice is always depending on your circumstances and your role,
well. If you're not an AWS engineer or an engineer in general, then being AWS hands-on doesn't really matter. But if you are an engineer, I'd say first build your foundation and start getting used to the console and then move to infrastructure as code tools such as CloudFormation or CDK or Terraform. Now, in terms of next steps, my plan is to go and complete more AWS certifications. The next one I'm taking is AWS Developer Associate, which I'm going to take in a couple of weeks time and then push towards the SysOps or the security speciality. Let me know in the comments what exams that you're going to be taking in the near future. Now, once I've done those two, I'll prepare and focus on the pro level certifications, which are three hour long exams. And the questions are super long and obviously more difficult, but those are my AWS certification goals for the rest of this year. And if I can get six of those certifications before 2023, then I'll be very happy and content with my progress. Also, did you know when you pass your pro level certifications, they actually recertify you for your associate level certifications. So maybe in the future, I will only do my pro level exams twice, which will certify me for five AWS certifications. Let me know in the comments if you are thinking about doing any AWS certifications, how you're preparing for them. And as always, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you on the next one. Peace.